Hi, in this video, I'm going to give you my top 10 photography apps and resources to make your photography life easier, better, more efficient, and more fun. Well, let's go. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography. Now, I often get asked about what photography apps I'm using. And in this overcrowded world of photography apps, it can quickly get overwhelming. So I thought I'd put this list together that I've curated myself to show you what I'm using on a regular basis and which apps are really helping me solve a problem. Okay, let's get into it. First up, we have the Lightroom app. Now, I talked about the whole Lightroom and Adobe ecosystem a couple of weeks ago. I'm ho I've hoped a few of you have checked that out. It is brilliant. But one of the things I really like about the app is it lets me just go into a photo and edit it or tweak it a little bit before I'm going to post it on social media. One of the other great things about the Lightroom app is that it has a native camera built into it and that captures DNG RAW files. And the amount of adjustments and data that's captured in those RAW files really can take your iPhone or Android photography to the next level in the post-processing. Also with the Lightroom app as well today, you can make some pretty advanced adjustments and that includes things like ND grads. It's a really great app, give it a try. Number two is PhotoPills. It's an app I've talked about a few times before and it's basically the Swiss army knife of photography. It's got something there probably for almost all photographers. It's got things like exposure calculators. It's got a planner to help you plan your shoots and photography. It will help you do your nighttime photography, things like the Milky Way shots. It's got a time-lapse mode that lets you measure your time lapses and get the right period of time and the right number of shots. It measures the hyperfocal distance. It's also got a brilliant AR or augmented reality mode where you just point it and you can see exactly where the sun is going to set or the moon is going to rise in your field of vision. It's a great app. I've talked about it before. It is a little bit expensive now. It's about £10 expensive for an app, but it's still well worth it for a lot of photographers. Next up is the Canon Camera Connect app. Now, I'm sorry if you're shooting Nikon, but this is something that you should maybe push Nikon to be putting into their cameras. A lot of the new Canon cameras have a built-in Wi-Fi and that now lets you remotely connect to your tablet or your phone and it lets you have remote control of the camera. It's something I've found myself using more and more and more recently. If you look, I'm currently controlling the camera with the iPad here and you can control exposure, you can start and stop recording for video, you can use it if you're doing landscape photography and you've got your camera really close to the ground, you can adjust your exposure and you can actually take the shot from your phone when you're out in the field and it's an absolute game changer. It doesn't mean you're bending down to your camera all the time once you've got it set and it's just a really nice app that's just making my life much easier. It's letting me do more as well which is why it's important to me. For example, when I'm at a wedding, if I have a camera like this set up on a tripod doing video, I can be with another camera taking photographs and always controlling the other camera on the tripod. It is a game changer. That's taking things to another level, just giving you a new level of control and allowing much more multitasking than we could do in the past. Number four is a weather app. If you're doing any kind of shooting outside whatsoever, you're going to want to check your weather app on a regular basis. I use for the, here in the UK, the BBC weather app. It is not the most accurate one, but it does let you list lots of different places that you attend so you can quickly monitor all those different places. I don't want to use actually an app for weather that's too specific and too accurate because that can sometimes put you off actually going out. Sometimes the BBC weather app just shows it's going to be average so I'll head out it might go bad it might go great but I'm out there capturing moments that I otherwise might not have caught like this shot of the lighthouse in a lightning storm I am clutching at straws a little bit but I think out of that it's actually forced me to think a little bit harder about how I can pull a composition out of this situation so the vlog <laughs> isn't a total failure. Next, I'm using the Ordnance Survey Map app. A map app is going to be important. Google Maps, for example, you need it to get to the places you want to shoot your photography if you've not been there before. But when I'm out and about in the wilderness doing my landscape photography, the Ordnance Survey app is absolutely brilliant. It has all the different types of map on there that Ordnance Survey produce, the Land Ranger ones and the Explorer ones, all those kind of things. And it syncs in with your GPS on your phone so you always know where you are. It's important to stay safe 
when you're out and about in the wilderness and know where you are, the OS map app does that really well. It's about £20 for a year subscription, but with that you get all the maps and you can download them onto your phone. So when you're in the mountains where there's no signal, you can still use those maps and see where you are on it. You, you might want to take a battery charger as well, just to make sure your phone doesn't die. I'm intending to talk about that a little bit more and show you how it works in an upcoming video. 500 picks, that's the next one. It's something I've been pretty slow in getting onto. 500 picks is a sort of photo sharing social website and it's sort of replaced what Flickr used to be. Flickr is dead. Oh my goodness, what have they done? It used to be great, but 500 picks has kind of taken up the mantle that Flickr has left behind. You can see some really good quality images on there. You're not getting all the rubbish that you see on Instagram. You can see the pictures in nice high resolution as well. And it seems to be a pretty good community on there. They've also started to introduce a few features for professional photographers, a marketplace, websites, that kind of thing. It's not something that I've delved into yet, but I am now on 500 Picks, so I'd love it if you could give me a follow at First Man Photography at 500 Picks. And next, that leads us on to Instagram. You know why, and if you're not, you should. The next one is also from Instagram, but it's the Hyperlapse app. This is there to create those sort of walking hyperlapses, and the way it works is by digitally stabilizing the footage and gets those really nice hyperlapses. What it's also great for, though, is if you turn it around landscape size, you can shoot it, but you can slow it down to one time speed. So you just end up with digitally stabilized footage straight onto your iPhone that looks beautiful if you get some nice, interesting footage with it. It's an app I've used a bit now, and it's really good and it's free, so well worth a try, particularly if you do video. Next up is Medium. Now, if you haven't heard of it, Medium is a blogging platform where some of the newest writers and some of the best writers all contribute, and there's just so much there to read, and the written word is there front and center. There's some great photography stuff on there as well. I've been writing for some time now for one of the biggest photography publications on there called Vantage. It's well worth checking out. There's some great photography articles on there. It's a really nice community there. There's a lot of positivity and Medium is a good place to check out if you're interested in reading some of your content. Number 10 is the Humble website. We are all now operating on our phones most of the time, but there is still lots out there on traditional websites. I'm talking about photography blogging sites like Petapixel and F-Stoppers that are both great. You've got Canon Rumors and Nikon Rumors that are always quite good fun. And you've also got things like Skippy Sky that can help with your sunrise and sunsets. And of course, you've got the First Man Photography website. The apps I've talked about have saved me time. They've made me more efficient and that just lets me do more and more and more and therefore get better. Hopefully they can do the same for you. Anyway, I'll put a link down below to everything I've mentioned and please do leave a comment and let me know if I've missed anything. What do you like to use? Share your ideas with everybody else. That'd be really appreciated. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell. I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography in the studio. Out. Who's there? Hello. What are you doing? Have you come to see me? What are you watching? This is for My Little Pony. My Little Pony. Daddy's just filming.